This is without, and this is with a really cool portable handheld flash. That's a good one. Today we're going to be taking pictures with the world's most powerful speed light. Now what is a speed light? A speed light is a flash that you can stick on your camera's hot shoe or hold off to the side and take pictures, but it needs to be light enough and small enough that you can hold it for extended periods of time without your arm getting tired. And that's kind of what wedding photographers do. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. What is the most powerful speed light in the world? Now this is a typical speed light right here. This is a Godox 862. Um, it's, it's okay for indoors when you're taking pictures of the family at night in the dark, <laughs> but, uh, outdoors like this, it's basically useless. They're just not strong enough. So what if we could get something that is strong enough that you could just, that's lightweight and small that you can just have right on your camera or right off the camera that is really strong and can fight with the sun. So that's what this is about. All right. Well, this is a AD200. This is the first level of what you can use that you can handhold that's small enough, that's portable. I love these things. I use these a lot. Uh, nice and bright, 200 watt seconds. It's wireless, but it does not have the hot shoe attachment. Now, why is this hot shoe attachment so important? Because I don't ever take pictures with a, a flash right on the camera. It's just the harsh lighting of right in the face, deer in the headlight lighting. So why would you need this? I'll talk about that in a minute. So the next step up is the AD300. It also is wireless and does not have a hot shoe. The next step up after that is the subject of this video, and that is the AD360. This is something that you can actually stick on the hot shoe of the camera, and it is a super bright 360 watt seconds, almost twice as bright as the AD200 flash. Uh, the head swivels, which is really cool. It can swivel upwards. Really, really, really useful. Comes with this nice dish here. And you can have other attachments too, which I'll show you in a minute that you can use. So why would you want something that has a hot shoe attachment? Because this setup right here is not good for lighting. This is right here. Now this is wireless. You can use it wirelessly. But there's times where you don't want to use wireless. Three times in the last year, like for example, we were at the Jade Mountain Resort, beautiful location. We were about to take pictures and my flash just starts going off like bam, 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 bam. I go, what, what's going on? I'm not touching anything. Well, it just so happens there was another photographer in the area taking pictures and he was triggering my flash. Most people have Godox flashes nowadays. Uh, and then a little bit later, we were in the Seychelles on the beach, flash starts going off. And I go, what's going on? I was noticed right off to the side behind a rock, there's a photographer, a wedding photographer taking pictures of a wedding couple. Now, yeah, I could spend time and go through my flash trigger and my flash and change the channels, change the groups and change the different settings. And, you know, you have to guess, well, wait, which channel is he not using? Let me wait till he flashes again and change that. Oh, no, that's not it. You know. That's ridiculous to have to go through all that. And so that's why a cord comes in handy where you don't need wireless. In the old school world, a camera like this, this is a Nikon. It has one little knob on there. And this is a basic connector. This is the old way of doing it. And this is the basic old school cord here. And you'll notice this is the attachment you put on the hot shoe. If the flash is not on the hot shoe, it just has a single connector on there. And... This is a PC connector. The other end of it is, is also a PC connector, or it has a mini jack like this. Now this mini jack, by the way, the AD200 does have a mini jack connector. So you can trigger this flash with a cord, but this is the old school cord. It only has one connector. And when you do something with this old school PC cord, you can only flash up to 1 250th of a second, which again is great for at night when you're in a room at, in, indoors, but outdoors in the sun like this, it's basically useless. It's not, you're really limited with what you can do with 1 250th of a second. For example, let's say you're outdoors, you want to take a flash picture of somebody, but you want to have the background out of focus. That would mean you'd have to use an f-stop of like 1.8 
which means your shutter speed would have to be really fast to make everything not be overexposed. So your shutter speed would have to be like one six thousandth of a second. Well, these old school cords can't handle anything that fast. This is where something comes in called high speed sync. High speed sync allows you to flash at super fast speeds. That's why you need a cord like this. This is a high speed sync cord. Now look at the difference between the old school flash. You see that? That has one, one knob on it and this has five or six little buttons connectors on it. So that is the difference. High speed sync has to have all these little knobs that connect to each other, talk to each other. And that's what you need to connect this with this. Now there's other reasons too why this comes in handy. Uh, there, usually when you're in a really cool location, that's a, pho a photographically really nice location, chances are there's gonna be other photographers in the area also with their flashes. And that's where you run into trouble. So the more beautiful the location, the more the odds are you're gonna wanna have a cord instead of wireless. Now I'm gonna show you in a minute how to uh, use multiple flashes and not even use wireless, but I'm gonna get to them in here. So what you do is you put, the, this is also called a TTL cord. It's high speed sync TTL cord. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna take pictures in a minute with this. So what you do is you attach one end to the camera and the other end goes on the flash connector here, the, the uh, high speed sync TTL hot shoe connector. So now we are ready to take pictures off camera. And this is the most brightest, most powerful flash you can get. 360 watt seconds that you can hand hold. It's not that heavy. Now this is a super powerful flash. So all the guts are making the flash super powerful are right here. And the reason it's not that heavy is because it, it has another cord that goes to a battery. And this battery, you can drape over yourself like this, or it has a belt loop, um, loop here that you can put on your belt. There's four lights that come on and tell you the power level, which is really cool. The batteries are interchangeable. The weight of the batteries is on your hips, whereas this isn't really that heavy, which is really good. And you can also, this is another cool thing about this. This flash has so many cool features. This bottom actually comes off. When you buy this thing, it comes with two attachments. One is for the hot shoe, and one is for a light stand, and it's a quarter 20 thread, so you can actually unscrew the bottom of this thing and take off the hot shoe attachment and put on a quarter 20 attachment if you're just gonna use it for wireless. So this is really cool that you can switch these two out. All right, so here we have the quarter 20 bottom on one of these, and it's just screwed right onto a light stand. You don't even need a swivel head here because the, the flash itself is a swivel head. So you don't have to worry about this thing swiveling. Anyway, so now you've got the power supply kind of dangling here, but that's not a problem because they also make this part. This is a really cool part. It's made for attaching to a light stand. You just clamp it on there like this. And then you with the belt loop that is on the battery pack, you just put it in there and it, there you go. You've got a nice securely attached thing. And the, another thing that you can do, which is kind of cool, is because, uh, and I've seen photographers do this, you can have this light be really high up on a pole, and then you can hold the pole. You actually hold the light like this, and the camera in the other hand, and you can have a light from way up high while you're holding it. And you can actually walk around like this. I've done this before. I've walked around with this because that's not really not that heavy, but it's super bright. So you have a nice powerful strobe up on the end of the pole and I can be taking pictures triggering that. So there's so many uh, ways of using this thing. If I had a powerful flash with a battery attached to it up there, I wouldn't be able to hold it with one hand but this makes it a lot easier to be able to do that. So that's really cool. Another attachment that comes with this is you can take off this little parabolic dish here that comes with it. And it comes with this little tiny, it's so cute, little tiny soft box with this attachment. Just attach just like that. So, 
this is great for for weddings and stuff like that we're just walking around taking pictures of people pretty close up so now i got a lightweight little flash here with a little softbox that i can just hold right here taking pictures with my camera so just walk around like hey click hey click hey click you know this is lightweight it's it's bigger than a little dish softens the light this thing i've used this thing a lot this and this also attach to the ad200 if you want but the ad200 is just wireless you can't attach a wire to it it's not high speed sync with a wire like this thing okay so we're going to take some pictures now using the 360 now this is the 360 mark ii uh the, the this is wireless and the mark one it had the option to put a USB wireless thing on there, but this has got the wireless built in. Okay, now this is the 362. It says a C on here, which means it's meant for Canon. But the cool thing about this and the bad thing about it is that Godox, which is also Flashpoint, and Flashpoint is the same as Godox. It's just Adorama's branding of it. Godox, Flashpoint, and Explore are the exact same thing. They just put change the names. Anyway, you can buy a flash trigger for Sony, Nikon, Canon, Panasonic Lumix, they all trigger the flash. Now you can have multiple people in the area, one with a Sony flash trigger, one with a Canon flash trigger, one with a, a Nikon flash trigger, and they all can trigger the same flash. Even though this says Canon, it knows that there's Godox triggers around. And that, so that's good if you want that, but it's bad if you don't. Like when I'm in an, a public area where there's other photographers and they're triggering my flash, that's why I want to use the cord because then I don't get into the wireless issues. But let's say you want to have multiple, let's say you have a cord attaching to this, not wireless, but you want to have multiple flashes, which we're going to do also later on. The cool thing about this is, okay, you can have the cord triggering this flash, but let's say you have one or two other flashes. Well, this thing not only can get triggered with wireless or a cord, it can also get triggered optically or with infrared. So you can trigger it infrared, you can trigger it optically, you can trigger it with a wire and you can trigger it wirelessly. So the, not a lot of flashes do that anymore. So you can have a cord running to this one and the other two are optically or infrared triggered without having anybody's wireless signal interfering with you. So that's really cool also. So all right, so no more talking. Let's just get into picture taking and you're going to see how great and powerful and uh, I've had this thing for so many years. I actually have several of these. I'm going to be using a, uh, a little... Canon M50 and uh, this is an APS-C camera. I'm also going to use a Sony 6300 with a Sony flash trigger and then we're going to be also using a Panasonic Lumix G7. So I'm going to show you this flash even though it says C on it for Canon can be triggered by all kinds of cameras and you're going to be you're going to love how powerful this thing is. So here we go. Okay so first I'm going to take a picture without a flash so as you can see what it looks like without a flash. Her face is in shade. Okay, so now I've got the flash on the hot shoe, like the old, the old way of doing it. Let's just take a picture with that first. Okay, now I have the cord, and we're going to take a picture off camera. That's without a flash, and this is with. That wasn't even full power, that was only one-eighth power. Oh, and I had a polarizing filter, which knocks it down two stops even more. So one-eighth power with a two-stop polarizing filter in bright sunlight. That's pretty amazing how strong this thing is. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to use a longer lens. I'm going to back up. And I'm going to put in a second light out there as a hair light. So this is a second AD360 right here. It's going to hit her from this side as an edge light. I'm going to use this as my front light, which is going to be further back. I'm going to do this one wirelessly, so you can see it works in all modes. All right, this is without a flash, and this is with. The flash beeps when it's fully recharged, and it's okay to take another picture, but you can turn that off if you want. Without. With. This is one four thousandth of a second. I got a two-stop polarizing filter on here and it's still a little bit too bright that's amazing without with right there that was good that was a good one perfect nice
Okay, so now I switched over to Sony. I have a Godox flash trigger on top. It's an X1 flash trigger. And I have my 8360 here with my core, uh, my uh, battery pack in my pocket. And I have another one right here. And uh, I'm, using a, uh, <laughs> I'm using a reflector for the opposite purpose. I'm using it to actually cast shade on her. So she's actually in shade right now. This is what it looks like with no flash. Pretty dark. So now I'm going to turn the flash trigger on. And this is what it looks like with a flash. That's good, right there. Give me that look. Nice. Now I'm going to go way back, like, you know, 15 feet back, and let's see uh, if this flash can handle it. It's still only at one quarter power. And this is still with the diffuser on the front. It's still got this white diffuser on there. I haven't even taken that off yet. This cuts down the power even more also. Squat down. Yeah, like that. Okay, now I'm switching over to Panasonic. This is a G7 with a flash trigger, a Godox flash trigger on top. Okay, this is without a flash. Whoa, that's too bright. Look how dark that sky is, and look how bright the flash is. So this is more powerful than the sun, and she's in the shade. It's still too bright. So as you can see, it works with any kind of camera. Nikon, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Lumix. It's bright, it's powerful, it's portable. I love it. This whole setup costs about $500. There is another flash that's kind of comparable by METS, the 76 MZ5. It costs about the same, but the METS is not as bright as this and it doesn't have high speed sync. So this is the only flash speed light that you can get that is this bright, 360 watt seconds, which is almost 400 watt seconds, that has high speed sync, optical, infrared, wireless, cord, and it's Godox, which means you can trigger it with any camera. It's just, I love these things. I've had these forever. All right, so that is the AD360 Mark II with any camera that has a hot shoe. That stays you. This thing is so great. I love this so much. I'm gonna share the joy with you. I'm gonna give two of these away. The whole thing, the power pack, the flash, everything. I'm gonna give two of these away and I'm gonna give away my Canon M50. I barely use this thing. I've used this maybe a total of two days. It's basically a new camera. So, and I'll throw in a 14 to 45 kit lens also. So, I'm giving away the Canon M50 and two AD360 Mark II flashes. So, uh, what you do is you go to marcuspicks.giveawayenter.com. Pick the thing you want. You can only pick one item. marcuspicks.giveawayenter.com. Pick the item you want, and I'll pick the winners next week. So I hope this inspired you to show you what's possible, which is what I try to do with all my photography videos. This is a really cool thing to have, and um, that's it. So stay tuned till next week. Until then, have a good week.